there, I'm Tammy at All About Living, and today we are going to preserve some nectarines. I am going to make a, a conserve jammy kind of thing. I've always put up peaches because they're generally readily available and we always had peach trees at Granny's or they were either at our house or at the neighbor's house. I can't remember. But anyway, we always had peaches. But nectarines are just, they just add something. So when I found these nectarines, I said, I'm going to do this. You put them up just like you do peaches. So we're going to do this. Now, if you've already canned before, some of this will be redundant, but I have new subscribers all the time, and some of them are really young, and they may not have ever canned, so we're going to go over everything. We're going to go over what you need to have, plus the recipe, plus getting it jarred up, the whole shebang. All right, you're going to need a ladle. You're going to need a funnel to put your stuff in your jars. You're going to need a, a debubbler to make sure you get all the air out of your jars. You're going to need a lifter with a little magnet. Now these come as a kit. And probably when I bought mine a really long time ago, it was probably like $5 for a kit. So you figure now it's probably closer to 20 But it also comes with a jar lifter so it would be a four piece set and you absolutely have to have these things because they just make it so so much easier I'll leave a link down below if I can find one or Randy can find one I don't play on the computer that much and for making nectarines or any kind of jam you'll need a, a potato masher or you could use an emulsion blender I prefer the masher. You usually need Sure Gel. Sometimes you don't. Some recipes don't require it, but most do. So you need some Sure Gel. You'll need lots of sugar. <laughs> and you're going to need lids and bands and jars. Now, I've been doing this a long time, so I have you know, lots of lids and lots of jars, but I always buy new band, new lids every time for a new, I do keep them and I use them for dry goods, but I don't ever can with them again. Some say you can, but you know, I don't, just whatever, I don't. All right, and you'll need one cup of vinegar and a paper towel, which I use to clean the lids off the tops of the jars before I put the seals on them. You're going to need a big pot to water bath can in, a small pot to heat your lids up. You know, we're not going to boil these lids. We're just going to bring them up to like 115 degrees. You could still actually put your finger in it. We just want to make sure there's no bacteria or anything on our lids and the vessel to cook in. And today we're using nectarine, so I already pre-cut enough for three batches. That's four and a half cups per bag. And then I put it in the fridge overnight with lemon juice. I put for four and a half cups of fruit, I put two tablespoons of lemon juice. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I cut them up. But I just sat there watching TV the night before. And while I was watching TV, I just cut them all up and got them ready to go for today. And these are really soft. And you want to make sure you take those brown spots off. Right. These are really soft, y'all. You actually, if you didn't want to, these are store-bought. So, you know, I went ahead and washed them real good and I'm going to skin them. But if they're your nectarines out of your yard, you don't have to do all that. Anyway, I'm just going to cut it off of, 
off of the stone, the pit. Nothing special. And you don't want to hit that pit. You know, I know that seems sort of like a, a loss or whatever, but it's really not because that pit will make your jam bitter. So you really don't want to go near it. And then I just kind of cut it like that after it's on the cutting board. And that's it. You're good to go. Your fruit's all cut. Now let's go get them in the pot. Okay. One thing I forgot to tell you is that you will need something in the bottom of whatever you're going to water bath your in. It can even be a tea towel. Just as long as there's something in the bottom between the heat, the base, and the, char and the jar. So either one of those or a tea towel. Alright, now we're going to get our eye on. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Okay, now we've got a high flame. And I'm going to take my four and a half cups of nectarines and drop them right in that pan. We're going to get them, we're going to let them get hot and start the juices to start to flow. And then we'll add the sugar and the pectin. No water, just the fruit. Okay, as they start, as the juices start to run, you need to make sure that you're stirring. Stay, stay around your stove. You can't go do laundry and leave them up there because they'll scorch and then you'll have to throw your batch away. You'll just want to stand there and stir and Get a little liquid going. And then we'll go to the next step. Okay, see how we're juicing up now? That's what you want. You want it to start juicing up. And that time-wise, I really can't tell you because it depends on the firmness of your fruit, whether or not you've cut them the night before and refrigerated them like I did, or that they're softer, temperature, just all depends. You're just going to have to go by, by sight. Okay, see, we're all nice and bubbly and boiling. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my masher and mash my fruit a little bit. Now I'm not trying to make a puree. If I was going to make puree, I'd go ahead and use an emulsion blender. I just want to break up the bigger pieces. Right. And that's what we should look like. And now we're going to add our a little bit of sugar and our pectin. Always, bang, 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 that's the way you do it. All right, now take your nectarines off of your eye right now. Just slide it off. We're going to come over here and we're going to get our pectin, which for some reason was all inside there. About a half a cup of sugar and pour that in there. We're going to give that a good stir and get it all incorporated. Now we're going to go over to the stove, put our nectarines back on the eye, 
and pour this in. Stir that. Now you definitely want a high heat. And we want a rolling boil that you cannot stir down. And I mean cannot stir it down. No matter what you do, it's just going to keep right on bubbling. Remember to keep moving it around. You don't want it to scorch or burn. Just lightly just keep moving. All right, that boil is coming. See the bubbles all on the side? That boil is coming. Y'all, it is hot today. It is hot in North Florida. This cook shed doesn't have any air, so if y'all start seeing my face bead because I'm standing over this stove, just ignore it. All right, we'll get, we're getting there. Now, this is my peach recipe, and I know it'll work just fine. But just in case, I went and looked up nectarine jam to see how other people do it. And I've seen them add as much as seven cups of sugar to this little bit of fruit. You can't even taste the fruit if you do that. I mean, I just, so I'm just going to use my recipe, tried and true peach recipe because I know these peach, these nectarines were especially sweet. Randy will sit and eat like three of them at one time, just sit and eat them. I mean, they were just so, so good. So, I'm not putting seven cups of sugar in here. Alright, at this point, I can't knock my bubbles down. So we're ready to add the rest of that sugar. Okay, now you remember I already used a half a cup of sugar. And this recipe only needs a total of three. So I need two and a half cups of sugar. Now I use unbleached sugar 99% of the time. But it's getting so expensive. I don't know, I bought some Domino just in case I run out or but I prefer taste-wise and health-wise to use the unbleached sugar. All right, now we're gonna get that stirred in and we're gonna get that sugar nice and melted. And we're gonna let it come up to a bowl and boil for two minutes. All right, see my good boil? I'm boiling now. Keep stirring, you don't want to stick. But you need two minutes at this nice rolling boil. All right, I'm a little behind the eight ball. I should have already put my jars in, but we're gonna do that now while I'm waiting on that two minutes. Get my jar sterilized while I'm still stirring because I don't want them to stick.
And this recipe is supposed to make five half pints. So just in case, I'm gonna put six. Just in case there's a little extra, we don't waste nothing. And we stick that in the fridge. Oh, and I need to turn my eye on over here for my um, lids. And I've lost my match. Ah, found them. Messing up my stew. All right, we're gonna get those lids warm now. My two minutes are done, and I know because I'm getting really nice and thick. So I'm gonna turn that eye off now. And I'm gonna stir till it quits bubbling. Otherwise you still might scorch. Okay, I'm done bubbling. It is ready. My jars should be ready because they don't need but just to get good and hot. And by the time I get these filled, my lids will be hot. All right. We're going to take our jars out that are now nice and piping hot. top of that jar and we are gonna start this pan's hot ah we are gonna start ladling that jam which is already starting to gel and you just want a quarter of an inch headspace. Now we're going to debubble, which I don't, this is so thick, I don't think I have any bubble, but we're going to do it, just to be sure. And now we're going to get some rings. Fingertip tight. We're not torquing them down, just like that. And these jars are hot. Just like that. Now we're going to get that water up to a bowl. And we're going to water bath for 10 minutes. OK, 
Okay, and we're gonna get this front eye back on because this is my hottest eye. And this is where I have to do it. And we're gonna get the highest flame we can get. And we're gonna put that water right over the top. We're gonna set our jars in there. And I'm gonna have to add some water because I need at least an inch of water above the lid and I do not have it. All right, now I'm good and over the top. And that vinegar I used to clean the lids. Now that vinegar that I used to clean the lids with, we're not gonna waste that. We're gonna pour it right in there. And that keeps your jars from being cloudy from city water or from well water. It just stops the mineral deposits and it does a wonderful job and your jars will be nice and pretty and crystally. Just saying. Don't forget your lid. You'll need a lid. You know, always water boils faster if you got a nice lid. So get that lid on there so you can come up to that good boil. My 10 minutes are up. I have turned my eye off so that that boil would stop. I'm gonna grab my jars. Right there. And you need to make sure that you haven't set pop, pop, yep. Make sure there's a good two, three inches between there so that they cool evenly. And you need to let them sit for 24 hours. After your 24 hours are up, you can wipe your jars down, take the rings off, Wash your rings, put them away, use them again. Put your jam on the shelf for a rainy day. I'll see you in the next video. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye!